aperture. Okay, so let's get started. Welcome everybody to um, Aperture Conversations. Um, we're here to celebrate the launch of Houseplants, which is a pop-up book of Daniel Gordon's photographs. Um, many of you know Daniel Gordon's work, but I'm gonna tell you a little bit about him and Simon Arispe, who's joining us. Um, Daniel's really known for um, photographing in still life and still life has had such a wonderful renaissance in photography and he's really helped move that genre and conversation forward. Um, he's interested in subjects that proliferate online, houseplants being one of them, food being one of them, and um, often is taking pictures from online and from life and printing them out, cutting them up and reshaping them into objects um, messing with the color sometimes and uh, then re-photographing them into still life. And so it really kind of, it, it's, it's never an exact um, replication and that kind of goofiness and offness is part of the point and it really being quite beautiful but also um, helps us to question like what is, what is a still life? What is a photograph? What is sculpture? What is a cutout? So all these things kind of intersect in, um, in his work um, and it's, he's often playing with the shadows of things. And so a pop-up book felt like a natural fit uh, somehow. Uh, and joining us also, who was on the team with us, is Simon Arispe. Um, Simon is a, an award-winning paper engineer and illustrator. And you may not know, and a lot of you probably haven't made pop-up books, but you cannot just uh, cut it up and make it yourself. You need to work with someone who is an expert and a paper engineer, and that's always been a dream of mine. So um, we uh, hired Simon, and there's not that many paper engineers in the world. There's, uh, you know, looks like a few dozen, and we reached out to a few, a few of them at the start of this, pro uh, of this process, and ultimately Simon really seemed to get uh, Danny's work right away and responded to it. And when we met with him as a kind of, I don't know, a little interview just to see if it was going to work, um, he, we were really blown away by a, by a wonderful book he had just finished called Zahawk. And maybe we'll take a look at that tonight too. So um, it, it's the dream team here and we're going to uh, mainly turn it over to Daniel and Simon, but really looking at um, how this, um, what is the pro what was the process and what was the product and really how do you, how do you work to make a still life move in, in a sense. So, um, Danny, I'm gonna kick it off to you. <laughs> sure, sure. Um, really happy to be here, um, in my house, but also with all of you. Um, so, um, I guess maybe, maybe I, since I was working on something today that, that might kind of make it an easy transition in terms of talking about my practice in general, I thought maybe I could kind of show you, show you what I've been doing in the studio lately. Yeah. Um, and um, yeah, maybe I'll just um, take this uh, phone and so, um, you know, I think at the, at the heart of, of my, my practice is just the, the simple idea of photographic transformation, you know, just thinking about um, how the camera can transform what is in front of the lens. Um, and um, even though this is the first picture since the pandemic started that I am using, um, an eight by 10 inch uh, film camera um, to shoot this uh, still life that I've been working on. Um, I've been actually working, working digitally, which has been really interesting. Um, and um, most of the time I will find images online, um, download them, print them, and um, construct like three dimensional objects. Um, you know, as we, we have these kind of, well, they're more, they're kind of like two and a half dimensional. Um, yeah, that's one have, of the weird they, things in looking at them is they have this depth to it from the picture, but they're, they're cutouts. Yeah, yeah. It's like an illusion of depth. Um, 
sometimes there is real depth um, and sometimes objects are more flat. Um, it was like a bowl of cherries there. And um, so- um, It's moving you know, pretty I, fast. What is? Yeah. You, it just was moved, uh, the camera was moving pretty fast over some of it, so. Oh, oh, you, should I go a little slower? Um, so, you know, the, the, basically the, the, the objects are made um, and then, um, you know, I, I start to create <clears throat> patterns and backdrops and then shoot images of shadows that I then put in the computer and, um, you know, make altered colored shadows that I'm, you know, working in and out of the composition. And I'd say in the last couple of years, really um, what I have become interested in is, um, is, is kind of the intersection of sculpture and photography and painting. And, and I think I'm in a lot of ways responding to technology, just like Photoshop and inkjet printing um, have kind of opened up the doors, not only for photographers, but for, you know, painters and sculptors to use those machines in, in various different ways. So I think it's kind of collapsed mediums and, and, and um, in a really interesting way. And I, you know, thinking back, I, you know, 15 years ago, I could never imagine making the things that I and making now and it, in large part I think that does have to do with technology not that I'm really a techie person but um, you know new tools arise and and um, and uh, and then new possibilities you know come um, so but this book was um, was like a really amazing collaboration with Simon and 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 all of your input Denise and kind of um, trying to figure out how to make my funny objects into a pop-up book, you know, into pop-up versions of them. Um, so how, trying to think of like how they would have the, the same feeling as, as one of these objects, um, but in this like new form, you know. Do you wanna show it to us? The book? Yeah. Yes, definitely, definitely. I'm I just want to mention that the book is like hitting the warehouse right now um, and is available uh, on our website. All right, let's see. Got a good, okay, here we go. Um, okay. <laughs> So, you know, in, in terms of the backdrop, um, uh, you know, I was working with the, the, the book pages as the kind of the background imagery. Um, we had to have the watermelon. <laughs> <laughs> there is, there really is like a pop um with the pop-up book and you know i that's obviously that's why it, it does pop up but there's like a sound too <laughs> yeah that's uh, an all sensory thing it is well and also there's a narrative is too strong of a word but there's definitely a kind of sequence and feel to to the pop-ups uh, yeah yeah i mean yeah we i guess it, that was kind of an intuitive, um, that was kind of an intuitive thing, right? I mean, we, we, I don't know. Yeah. Narrative is too strong a word, but, but it had to flow in the right way. Um, and yeah. you know, I, you know, I, I, I think that when Denise, uh, when we first started talking about this, I was like, a pop-up book like I I didn't quite I did I, I wasn't sure if I could see it and I and because I had just always associated pop-up books with children's books and not that I don't want kids to love this book but you know I, I, I was kind of really interested in making this an artist book that was you know an art object um, in itself um, 
And I think, you know, working with Simon and seeing like all this, the stuff that Simon has done, I think opened up my eyes to, to possibilities and, um, and kind of like seeing the pop up in a different way. I guess knowing like how you play with the shadows and originally I was looking at your, the portrait work that you do where the pictures in the front are really pushing like what, what is a portrait? What, it, what is this form? But the shadow and the cutout is perfect. And there mm. was something about that movement that I thought like, oh wow, pop-up book. It just made sense to me. But I remember saying that to you and you're like, let me think about it. <laughs> and that, <laughs> and <laughs> months went by <laughs> and, uh, and you came back and said, let's do it. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm glad I, I'm glad I did. Um, yeah. It's, it's a really special thing. Um, but then it felt like after meeting Simon, the world was kind of open and we were like, well, should it be houseplants? Should it be fruits? Should it, what, what does it need to be? And so that, I think that took a long time. Yeah. To, yeah. But, I think Danny's work lends itself though to pop-up books. I think he's got so much dimensionality and so much kind of playing with this flatness and this 3D texture to it. So I think the work kind of made sense as a pop-up book. Yeah, do you want to talk about it a little bit from your perspective? I mean, I feel like once we saw what was possible, it was like, should we do every trick in the book or what do we want to do, you know? So it was, it was very eye-opening. <laughs> yeah, definitely. So I think from my perspective, um, so I'm a paper engineer and that's, that's what I do. I, I work as an illustrator and a paper engineer. Um, but I definitely like looking at Danny's work and even just like the stuff on the cover, you can kind of see more of his work. Um, but I definitely wanted to play around with like, how do you make these shapes and these structures kind of have that quality that Danny's work has while still kind of, um, you know, playing around with the engineering so that each page is really different and kind of has like a new unique shape to it and definitely sort of a new unique story to it, if that makes sense. Yeah, right. Like we taught, we were, we were like, okay, so if we start off with the crown of thorns, that's like, I kept being like, Simon, how tall can we get this thing? Get, get, get it higher. Right. You're like, there's, there are limitations. You can't just, you know, do anything. Um, but, right. but then, then we thought like, okay, then if that, if the first page goes straight up, what do we, what do we want? How do we want the next page to open up? Maybe it, it's more like a, a snake plant you know, kind of why width that we're going to go for right. or something like that. Right. And really playing around these ideas of like, well, these things are going to be seen from all directions. So what are we going to choose for the fronts and the backs? And yeah, what can we do so that every page kind of has its own feel to it and it doesn't feel like there's nothing repetitive about it. I think that was something we talked about several times was making sure it was something different on every page. Well, I think I just want to point out that it's not like building a still life in the studio because things can't just go anywhere on that page and pop up. And that I think was really challenging. Like, first of all, all has to fold down into the size of the page, but then they have to like be together in certain ways. And so it was like, well, I want to put a strawberry over here, but it can't go exactly. So there were some real limitations and I think that was a real question. Like, can we get a strawberry? Can we put a strawberry? And Simon was like, no, I'm sorry. The, the strawberry yeah. cannot go there. <laughs> definitely a tyrant, no. No, but I think, I think you know, like, there are these times where like, when you're working with people, you want to try to you know, fulfill a vision and make things work, but you, you do have these very funny limitations sometimes where th certain things can only go so far in one direction or in another. And, and so how do you play with the engineering to create the biggest sort of shapes and the sort of biggest wow factor while still working in kind of the limitations of the paper is, is what I'm thinking about the whole time. Well, I remember yeah, and, at one point, oh. like Danny and I were having this, um, I don't know, highfalutin conversation about Warhol and should we have a banana in there and all these things. And, 
And I was like, Simon, what are you thinking about right now? And, and you were like, well, I'm wondering how you might like build the tension for that to, I was like, <laughs> you were in a completely different world than um, I had ever thought about, so. Yeah, yeah, no, definitely. As we're talking, I'm like, how am I gonna make a curve of a banana? How am I gonna, you know, like, yeah, much, much more structural for sure. Yeah, but, but um, Simon, if you go to the page Go to the page yeah. with this plant, because I, I I brought one that I that I had over. So like, you know, we talked about like how how do you capture the spirit of this funny object um, in in a pop up version? And I feel like you know, <laughs> I feel like you really you captured the plant. You know, uh, it, it really. In, in a in a it's not it wasn't it wasn't just structural you know like there was also a kind of um a kind of um feeling to 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 like how the plant looked and and how the leaves fell and and um all that stuff you know yeah no i think you're right i think there really is this this kind of you know we we sat around and talked about like at the very beginning, like which which plant we would want to do and, and kind of had a short list of the plants we were considering. And I think we were really looking for a certain kind of kind of each plant that, that fit and uh, had this kind of these gestures that we were looking for and these shapes that we were looking for. Um, someone had asked in the chat, um, Alan Raymond, um, could we describe the process um, step by step? And yeah, really, after deciding to do it, it was like we really did line up those plants. That, as Simon was just saying in in your studio, Danny, and kind of like page one, page, you know, just just had a little it felt like a fashion show almost. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then and then <clears throat> there was there were questions about the the limitations of what uh, Simon could do and what the die cut could handle. And, you know, so then that weeded out a bunch of, um, <clears throat> a bunch of ferns and like, right, you know, right. very like I, detailed yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, um, and then I think, you know, we looked at uh, a, a bunch of, of pictures and kind of, thought about if we were gonna kind of reduce down to the simplest form of maybe one of, one of the more complex still lifes, how, what objects would we choose and what, which ones would we put with which, which plants? And, um, and then also the question of like, how do you get <clears throat> the, what do you do with the page? You know, what do you do with the, 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 the page on the bottom? Um, and how does that relate to the yeah. plant? Um, and um, well, then Simon then, started making all the models. Then Simon yeah. started making the models, right. and that then yeah. things got exciting. Right. Well, you have a, a, Simon. I, so I have, yeah. a, I have a, here's a, like a rough um, mock-up of I guess it would be this plant on the first page is crown of thorns, um, and so what I do is I take Danny's initial kind of photos basically i have these reference of his work that we're working from and i end up making a mock-up kind of you can kind of see I, I print out kind of his photo on cardstock and then i'll just start cutting it up and you can see there's like tape and you know notes and marks all over the place and really it's just for me to figure out how do i start to take this and make it into something three-dimensional, make sure it, you know, can open and close and work every time. And then I'm just starting to refine that down kind of over and over again. And then once I have something that looks at all like a plant, then I kind of, then we came back together and started talking about it and figuring out how we could make it, you know. Can we add that bringing strong? back the editorial. <laughs> I think also yeah, there, exactly. was, there was a, we got some, there was a, a question of um, whether we're going to use source images or whether I'm going to re-photograph the 
the actual physical objects. Right. And, um, yeah. And, and, and I, and I think, um, I guess we, we did uh, a little bit of both depending on the plant and the, and like, and the objects, but in order to, to, to get them, um, to all be sharp and functioning well, I think we had to do a lot of like photographing of the object um, in order to, 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 to get like the images looking good, um, which was like, you know, uh, like yeah. a, another, a whole other step removed, um, which was kind of interesting. Cause then like, you know, sometimes you would see um, even like a little crease in the paper or something like that in the re photography of the, of the images. Yeah. And we were kind of, yeah, that was kind of an interesting part, I think, for you, for that you had to deal with was, was sort of playing with the source material and, and do you want to keep some kind of changes and glitches and what are we going to put on the back and on the front and, and sort of playing with your photography kind of it, it changed the, the purpose of a lot of those images for you, I think. At least that's what how was, I interpreted it. You know? Yeah, definitely, definitely. I, I'm trying to remember what, 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 how did, what was the next step though? What, well, after really, we had the white mock-up. Then they moved to color and then we were- Right, so for me, yeah. So for me, um, what we had to do was once we kind of approved something, we say everything looks good, um, I end up taking it all apart. So this whole thing gets totally destroyed, taken apart, every single piece gets scanned. Um, and then I put it into a program called Adobe Illustrator and I will go in and make die lines. And so what die lines are, are just like the cutout pieces of every single shape. Um, and so when, uh, what we'll have is a white mock-up of that same thing that's like all just like without any art. It's the same thing I just showed you, but it's all just made out of those die lines. And, and that kind of lets me by know. The this one's made by the printer, but I, I also had to make one for the printer just so that we could all be uh, clear that the engineering would work. You know, like that part is, is important. Uh, from my point of view, just it needs to work every single time for, you know, 10,000 times, whether or not it's opened by, you know, someone very slowly, someone very enthusiastic, I need to make sure it works. So this allows me to kind of troubleshoot and test it. Um, and then from there, then we go into the kind of color version and see all of the kind of the beautiful art in it and see how we can make that, you know, that final version. Well, actually, I'm seeing the proofs behind you. And I've never seen proofing like this before. Yeah. Usually it's much more ordinary. There's like pictures that make sense together. And then this arrived at the office. So it was in the, your background. And that, that was something, whoa. Yeah. So, <laughs> so yeah, so what Denise is talking about, this is a, a proof sheet and that comes from the printer. I've got another one here. And then this is, every single piece kind of printed out uh, for each of the different pages. And so each, each piece is kind of cut out and we can see all of the different sections in it. And basically this, is, this piece will then get cut out and turned into the book. This is yeah. sort of the, the rough cookie cutter. And it's machine, it's die cut by a machine, but then it's, it's placed by hand. Each of these books is made by an assembly line of people. Um, so it's quite a process to, um, to do that. And, and then they made a mock-up that they had put together just to show they knew, how, they knew how to put it together. And also what was interesting is the printer kept, they didn't understand that we wanted to keep the imperfections and so they kept color correcting to get it to look almost like a real watermelon or, you know, and so it, it started, um, 
yeah, we had to say like, no, it's supposed to be slightly pixelated or it's, it's not supposed to be the real yeah. color or, you know, it was, it was yeah, an interesting there's, conversation. There's this a real quality to the, to the project that I think we had to kind of really explain very um, succinctly that, yeah, that, that, that there's pixels, that there's these rips and tears in the artwork and that was meant to be there. So that was kind of a couple of funny conversations, I think, for you, Denise. It was also, it was really interesting trying to color correct these proofs because, you know, normally if there's a, a, a photograph, you, you can kind of see, oh, there's a red cast. You can see it in all these different colors, but because all the parts were separated out, it was like, it was, it was just like no other color correction I've ever, I've ever experienced. It was really, it was, it, it took a while to kind of, to, to, to get it right, especially because some of the, some of the, um, or a lot of the um, images were, you know, purposely saturated in, in kind of extreme ways. Um, so it was like, but it was hard to get the context of, of that, of those extremes. Yeah. Yeah, I think, I, I remember also something I think you guys were having is a lot of this paper um, is going to be kind of a very specific matte cardstock. Um, and so it's not necessarily the best for a, a high quality photo. You have to do a lot of color correction um, to make sure that, that the actual image looks correct. I think, I think you have to do a lot of troubleshooting in that. So that, that, that was kind of an interesting thing to have to deal with. But the, the end result is just glowing, like the actual book has such a nice color to it. Well, I remember we had a crisis of faith at some point. Like, wait, why are we doing this exactly? Like, are we, are we just reanimating the sculptures? Like, and I feel like we, we, you know, through that questioning, we came up with like an interesting way of, of dealing with the product, you know, like, do you remember that, Danny, or is it just me? <laughs> yeah, you're, I, no, I was all on board the whole time. No, I'm just kidding. Um, no, yeah, I remember having that conversation and it was just, it was a little, um, I think we just had to kind of, at a certain point, we had to forget the objects that I had made and then just just look at the pop-up objects uh, as as objects themselves, and once we did that, I think we were we were all on board, and um, and we were just kind of working within within the limitations that that Simon um, explained to us, um, and and it that was like its own interesting process. Yeah, what does it mean to you now to see? Right, but I, like yeah, I think there was. Hello. Hello. Hi. I can't. Um, I didn't hear what Simon said, but what does it mean to you now to see the still lifes moving? Uh, oh, that's a, that's an interesting way to think about it. Um, that the still lifes are moving. I guess. Yeah, that is really. It's like an animation. You know, it really is. Um, you know, I, I think I, I had tended to just think about, about them as being up or closed, open or closed. But yeah, I think, I think seeing them moving adds a whole other element to the, to the work. Yeah, they're like, it's like a theater almost. Yeah, yeah, I like that. We have a couple of questions in the chat. Um, Daniel, did the process of working on houseplants change your approach to creating your, your sculptural pieces in the studio? Well, I wouldn't say it changed the process of making um, the sculptural work that I re-photographed, but it did open doors to the possibility of making these sculptures into l larger, sculptures made of like metal, um, which, which I'm actually, I'm, I'm working on my first large um, outdoor sculpture, 
right now. And, um, and I learned a, a, a bunch um, through this process of kind of, 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 ter of, of wanting to capture the essence of, the, of, of my funny paper object, but then turning it into, moving it to like another medium, you know? Um, so, yeah. And then there's another question, um, this one from Catherine Maloney. Simon, could you talk more about the world of pop-up books? What are some of your favorites and why? That's a good question. Uh, maybe you could show us the um, Zahak. <laughs> yes. As well. Yeah. And, well, as you answer that question. <laughs> yeah, so, um, yeah, I mean, uh, pop-up books is a very funny, uh, funny world to be in just because every project I do is going to be a little different. Um, it's usually different just like uh, I have to come at it from such a different point of view every time. Like I think this project was really fun because it, it we were able to kind of focus on these these very specific things. Um, but then other projects I worked on, um, I did the I don't know if y'all know the Babadook book. Uh, I worked on that one a little bit, uh, engineered that one. So that's like a horror book um, based on a movie that I did a little while, I did a couple years ago. Um, and then the, the book that Denise is talking about, um, uh, this one's a hawk, uh, is a Iranian folk tale. Um, and so I worked with an Iranian illustrator to produce this one. And it's based on a thousand year old epic poem. And so, yeah, it's just a very different um, way of going about things. Um, it's still, you know, I still have to think about it in terms of the engineering, but there's always gonna be something very different and like what's going on and how, how I'm kind of looking at the artwork and, and sort of changing things to, to make it the most kind of interesting book it can be. Well, also, also those have feathers on it. I don't know if if um, oh. we get it close to the. I think that was like, that was such a surprise. <laughs> so Simon, it, with so like, all right, we, you know, with our project, we were looking at an object and then saying, how can we make, how can we make this object, a pop up object? How can we how can we keep the integrity of this object and moving into the form of a pop up. <clears throat> yeah. But with this like with it with that book, how did it start? Was it, it was it like an illust you it was just a an illustration that then you had to decide which parts come forward and back and like how yeah. do you Yeah, so I think I think for every every project there is kind of these um this conversation that that happens where it's it's what what is actually going to be a good thing to make as a pop-up book. You know, what's an actual, like a very dynamic, interesting situation, you know? And so if it's like somebody, you know, like this, like these larger moments of people like, you know, rising up and holding up a flag, like how do you make that? And, and what, do you, what do you do to make that interesting and different from the next page? Um, but with this one, the process was um, working with a, a designer, um, Hamid Rahmanian is his name, and he's a, an Iranian illustrator and um, designer. And so we, we took his images and these ancient miniatures and turned them into these kind of sculptural things. Um, so yeah, every, every project's different. Um, another one I worked on, um, this is a, just a project of my own. So this was a, uh, a project to kind of try to figure out if I could make a pop-up book that would go on forever. And so it's a story of like a salmon jumps into a river and then gets uh, eaten by a bear. That's great. And so just playing around with like, what can I do with a mechanism to kind of bring it into a situation that no one's ever seen before? How can I use artwork to kind of play around and tell this story, you know, do things with or without text. So yeah, just always, I'm always trying to figure out with all, with all of my work, just what, what can I do that's kind of different? And so I think with, with our book, it's, it's very different because of 
these kind of different subtleties to it. So yeah, every project is, is different. Is that, is that a, a, a recent project, the, the one you're holding? Uh, this one I did uh, probably like three years ago, I think. Okay. Um, yeah, and so I did a, I did a, a run of it. I, I did a, a run of a thousand on Kickstarter and just, you know, kind of decided to self-publish it and see how far I could take it. So yeah, you know, every project's different. I have a lot of questions piling up um, in here. Uh, there's a very special one for you, Danny, from Gus. Dad, <laughs> what's your favorite thing about the book? Um, oh, I know what it is. Let's see. Right here, it says acknowledgments for Ida and Gus. <laughs> right in there, buddy. <laughs> okay, um, for Simon, what types of programs do you use to create the pop-ups? Do you start with flat renderings and then export them into Adobe Dimensions? I feel like you touched on this a little bit, but maybe you want to say a little bit more. Uh, yeah, I'd like to talk a little more. Um, yeah, I don't even know what Adobe Dimensions is. Um, I'm pretty old school. It, it really starts with um, paper and tape. Um, my, my materials are, you know, scissors and, you know, bone folders and just small things to kind of cut cardstock. Um, and I just make very, like, it's very old school, just traditional um, cutting and pasting. And then eventually it does go into Adobe Illustrator. And that's how I make those die lines um, so that they can then be cut out and mass produced. Um, but really it's not, it's not too much digital. Uh, there's also Photoshop just in the event that, um, that I'm going to have to manipulate the artwork that comes to me, but, but that's pretty minimal. I'm curious how you, could you say a bit how you got into this? Yeah, so I, uh, I studied illustration in college. Um, I went to Pratt Institute and studied illustration. And then a friend of mine uh, was an intern at a pop-up book studio. And I had never heard of a pop-up book studio. I didn't know that anyone did this for a living. Um, and so I begged her to help me get an internship. Um, so thank you, Jess Tice. Uh, and then I've just been doing it ever since. It's been my only job since I graduated from college. Um, and now I work for myself um, and I try to just, you know, yeah, keep hustling and make pop-up books, see how long I can do this for. It's worked so far. Yeah. Um, uh, Yvette Whedon uh, just made a comment, wonderful mixed media sculptural book concept and the humorous element in respect of having a changeable house plant page to page. So just a little um, cheerleading there. And um, Elizabeth Christ asked us, um, are you thinking about another pop-up book of Daniel's work on fruit or any other subjects you considered? Mm. Question. I was thinking about it the other day. I was thinking about it the other day. Just uh, n nothing concrete, but I was like, I wonder, wonder what what another book would be. <laughs> Just musing on it. Well, didn't you say <laughs> Gus? Um, Gus thought insects. That's not, I don't know if that's really your thing, but someone needs to do a pop up on insects. That's true. That would be cool. Well, I, I think um, going to just just going to Danny's studio. Um, is in itself, you just see, you know, it's like hundreds of different plants and vases and objects printed out and they're sort of 3D and 2D. And so going to your studio, just there's, there's a lot of inspiration there. I gotta say, actually, I've been making uh, objects and shooting objects that are much more kind of everyday objects. Like for example, I, I just see right here, I have a sneaker um so you know i mean it could be it, that you know that that all kinds of things could could um i don't know that that 
could have a sneaker and a tennis racket and all these other funny, a Windex bottle, <laughs> all these other yeah. household items. Yeah, have you ever done a Windex, a Windex bottle and pop-up, Simon? <laughs> I didn't think it's the rights to, from Windex, but they tell you. <laughs> Um, yeah. Well, I think we talked yeah. about fruit for a while. Like, should we do only fruit? Um, you know, call it like goofy fruit or something like that. Um, we could revive that. <laughs> did we? Um, did we ever talk about doing doing portraits? Is that how it started, Denise? I think that's what what that, inspired the idea but i don't know if we if we maybe we talked about it i don't know hmm. but we 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 decided we decided not to do it in the end so yeah i don't know why maybe <laughs> there's something about it that feels like i would buy a photo book of that but i don't know if i would buy a pop-up book mm -hmm. of maybe yeah. it's, it's personal or something i don't know well, I also think there's something really uncanny about the book because there's there are objects and they kind of they kind of like live they look re there's something sort of realistic and surrealistic about it and so I think the fact that it, it it feels like it could be real is is what makes this book really interesting to me um, is just the kind of strangeness of looking at it. And I think the fact that it's all houseplants does that, you know. Mm -hmm. um, Ashley Turner has commented, I really feel like Daniel and Simon are paper soulmates. It's kismet. Yes. <laughs> it's true. Yeah. It's true. But I'm like, the, yeah. I'm the mess, the messy, um, just like reckless, uh, roommate and you are <laughs> you 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 like tie it all together you're like you know this is we, we this is the angles go this way and there we go boom I think, I think that's just perception i think i've done a good job of tricking you my my floor <laughs> of my studio is always just covered in paper scraps and just cut out <laughs> it's just like snow in my studio usually um so it's pretty yeah, i guess we didn't we didn't get, ever get to see all, all, all the parts that that weren't working out Right, right. I'm sure there's a, I'm sure there's a, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> there's some really sad moments where things don't work and I don't know why. And so I just like leave and come back the next day and, you know, hope it works. I did yeah, feel, no. I did feel that there was a, there was a, a nice chemistry, a nice kismet between you when we all met. In fact, we were, we were supposed to go on and interview other paper engineers. I don't even know if you know this, Simon, but then we decided like, no, no, actually this is, this is going well. Like it just seemed to all click. You ha you both um, had this affinity for cut paper and <laughs> and uh, yeah, it just felt felt right. So yeah, I'm glad. Um, Ashley Turner also says, for what it's worth, I would definitely buy a pop up book of portraits. Of course, I'd buy a pop up book of poop. So dot dot dot. There you go. So you know, those are two good ideas: portraits and poop. Next. <laughs> <laughs> um, here's a question for Danny. I'm curious if the 3D paper plants were created for the pop-up book or if they were created for the photographs first. They were made for the photographs. Um, and, the, and they were, they had been kicking around for like a, a good long time. Um, so um, I think I might have remade some of them um, because the ones that had been in my studio so long uh, were like becoming uh, degraded. Um, but they're, they're based off um, plants that had been in pictures. They starred in pictures. Well, also you had um, with, um, I think was it in Perry Photo or was it the New York Art Book Fair? You had done a pop-up plant store. Where you had the yeah. as well. Yeah, with uh, with the publisher One Star Press. Um, in um, we actually we did it at the New York New York Art Book Fair, and we also did it in uh, in uh, San Francisco at an art fair um, that they were involved in. And um, you know, I never had um, shown these 
uh, objects because um, they're they're really they're not like the the uh, artwork, but they're really cool, and I and I I like them a lot, and so this was kind of. Um, I think the perfect way to display them um, with with uh, with the publisher, um, not not so much in like a, a an art capital A context, um, and um, and yeah, it was it I, it was great to see to be able to show the objects um, in in person. And when I said a pop up plant store, it wasn't a pop up book. It was like. A pop -up <laughs> yeah event you know <laughs> but maybe yeah. that's what convinced you to do the pop-up book so you've done the <laughs> um here's another one uh simon who are some of um your other wait who are some of the other paper engineers you admire and why um, honestly yeah, I, are there like only 12 of you in the world there's not a lot of us yeah <laughs> Um, there are very few of us. So I, I really admire, um, uh, so I, I learned from um, two paper engineers uh, called Matthew Reinhardt and Robert Sabuda. So I worked with them for um, about eight years and just kind of mastered the craft from them. So they're definitely the people that I look up to. Um, and they're still both um, always pioneering like the field and making things just bigger and wilder every time so um, Matthew and Robert definitely um, and then a, I think a woman uh, named Kelly Anderson uh, who's also just a really insanely smart thinker and paper engineer is probably another favorite I forgot what I was gonna ask so I'm, I'm like half reading the chat um, Ashley comments as a lover of pop-up books nothing frustrates me more than the emergence of pop-up shops there you go. So much on that excitement. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. You know, maybe we should do a pop-up shop with pop-up books. Mm -hmm. Like, actually, that's actually an idea for you, Simon. I really should jump on that. Yeah. Yeah. Just like make a bunch of one-of-a-kind pop-up books. The pop-up pop-up store. Yeah. And just, just like sell them, just like sell them on the street like hotcakes. Yeah. Um, comment says, oh my God, I would die. See, this is a really good idea. Let's do it. Right. As soon as, as, as quarantine's over, I'll have a little sale at my studio. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Marissa uh, Soto says, is there a temptation to do a collaboration of gigantic pop-up sculpture? Sculpture. Hmm. Yes. <laughs> yes. I think... Simon and I, I mean, I think I did, wasn't I asking you at some point, like what, how, how yeah. big can you get? Like, wasn't, did, didn't you show me like a, a book that's a pop-up that is like human scale, like a huge, Yeah. or am I making that up? No, no, I think that did happen. And you and I had talked about, about this before and like what, what was possible. Um, a woman named Colette Fu uh, came up with a pop-up book that was, a, it's like, I think she won the world record or something, it's about four feet and it's this giant uh, Chinese um, folktale cave and it's super beautiful. Um, yeah, Colette Fu, so her work is amazing. But yeah, so you, can go, you can go big, but you know, you stop using paper, you start using hinges and lumber. But it's possible. Do you do um, a theater, theater <laughs> set and pop-up? Uh, yeah, Edward Gorey did a theater set in the 70s. Um, yeah, so there's, there's all sorts of ways you can take it. It's a very, I think it's a very um, fungible medium. Um, I do remember going into Danny's studio. Maybe it was the first time I went in there and there was like this giant salad. Um, you know, all the fixings, there was like, uh, you know, fork and knife and the bowl and, you know, I don't know. Oh, really? <laughs> I don't remember I don't know if that, that lends itself into pop-up now that I know what it's about, but um, in terms of like giant sculpture, I think, you know. Yeah, there's an, av there's an avenue for sure. Yeah. Well, in this public art project, I don't know if you can talk about it, Danny, that you're doing that. Um, I mean, that will have, it won't be pop-up necessarily, but it will definitely be giant sculpture. 
Yeah, yeah. Um, it's it's actually I'm kind of using a similar process in, in a lot of ways, just in terms of um, photographing my sculpture, kind of breaking down my my paper sculpture and using that maquette to assemble the parts that will be printed on aluminum. And, um, and this is another example of like technological advancements that, um, that make things possible that, that otherwise wouldn't, wouldn't be. Um, so like, you know, say the curve of a pot of the pot, um, the, the metal is able to be bent and then you can actually print onto the curved metal. Um, and, and then, you know, and then, you know, it of course has to be like engineered and, and, um, and, you know, so it's, it's safe and doesn't hurt anybody. Um, but, um, but yeah, like basically it's, a, it's a similar situation where I'm kind of trying to, um, capture the spirit of, of my object with a, that has like a, a funny back with uh, polka dots and, and um, you know, crumpled bits and stuff. And, and how do I capture that on the reverse side of the sculpture and, and you know, capture the spirit of the, of the front as well. Um, when will this be it, up? Like, can you tell it's, us? It's it going to be in, um, in Boston. It's a, a public piece in Boston in 2021. Awesome. On the on the on the Boston Greenway. Um, yeah. 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 Um, we have time for one last question. I think we've got to wrap it up. Uh, this one is for you, Danny. Who are the artists whose work you are looking at now and whose work inspires you as an artist? Well, uh, let's see. Uh, my my wife, Ruby, is an artist. And I think we are we're uh, we 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 work not in the same space but right next door to each other and um i think we share a lot of similar interests and we're always looking at each other's work and another artist who i have lately enjoyed looking at is um is my son gus who's who is just um he's seven and he's making amazing drawings that um have such great spirit and energy um you know um and um and then of course you know uh, uh painters and from dutch still life painters to matisse to um you know many many uh contemporary photographers um but yeah i i think especially now <laughs> i'm i'm looking very close to home there's, there hasn't been a whole lot of, of uh, going out. So, um, yeah, but, but in its own way, it's been, it's been um, good to, to hunker down with, with, with family. Does Gus have his own designated studio? Uh, it's the dining room table. <laughs> All right, nice, classic. <laughs> yeah. Well, even though it's all close to home, it's amazing that um, you and also you, Simon, keep working and doing this work dur during this time. So um, I admire you both for plowing on and, and making these things of, of beauty that will be out in the world. So I think that's a, a, good, a good place to um, end it for the night. Thank you everybody who, joined our conversation and please check out the book. It's available on, um, on our website and we're obviously so proud of it. So um, good night, everyone. Thanks, Denise. Thanks, Simon. Yeah. Good night, stay safe.